Yeah. It's the archivist, y'all. Exclusively interviewing <coughs> Raekwon. And who is Shaolin's chef Raekwon? That's a swordsman from out of Wu Tang clan. That's the chef, Raekwon. The one that cooks up that good shit to get your mouth watering. That's the blade thrower of the clan. That's the storyteller, the narrator, the equalizer, the lyricist, the impeccable, the strong. That's who that is. And the best times with the notorious Wu-Tang Clan, dropping gems on them for many years. Tell us about this. This shit is easy. This shit is something that we did in the lobby. We, we had fun doing this shit. We grew up listening to shit like Run DMC, Big Daddy Kane, KRS-One, and we got tranquilized by the music, and we started to take on our own lifestyle and incorporate that great early, early 90s, early 80s hip-hop, and it just changed us from boys to men. And on to the classics only built for Cuban links one and two. Can you elaborate from the first to the second, and being second, both on the charts for each, can you share the story of Cuban Links? The story of Cuban Links is basically the story of my life. You know what I'm saying? Before I was even, you know, doing this hip-hop thing professionally, I used to be on the streets, you know what I mean, selling drugs. And RZA knew that that was the only thing that I really would have been able to incorporate in my music. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, he knew that that was the godfather chamber that I was going to choose to be what I wanted to be for my lyricism. I wanted to come that way, speaking on some golf, all the hip hop. It just was something that was natural, and I just was speaking about what I knew, so it was cool. You know what I mean? And immobility, going gold, second on the charts. How was this for you when the record dropped? I was in, I was in a, I was in a good state of mind, and I was in a, a weird state of mind too because. The label wasn't really giving me the proper support that I really needed to really feel like I was winning at that time, but we did do great. We did a gold record, you know what I mean? I think I could have got more promotion, but at the end of the day, I still remain unanimous because it was a good quality album as well, though. And from Loud to Columbia, Universal, and now Ice H2O being your label. Tell us about the thoughts and experiences of your career. The thoughts and experiences of my career was definitely intriguing. It was something that really took me to another level because I had to learn the business, which is sometimes the thing that you don't really acknowledge the first time you come in the business. You just want to represent and show everybody you got skills, but me just having to go through them amount of years and just really learn how the business works and see the ins and outs of everything. I would say that was the most <coughs> most wildest experience because you know when you come in the game people just they want to take advantage of how they can capitalize off of your success. So you become successful but you don't really receive the fruits of labor that you're supposed to deserve because you already have sold yourself to to the devil far as how the music business works. So me just happened to learn the business, it was definitely interesting. Being one of the highest acclaimed MCs, what keeps Raekwon consistently cooking up that dope shit? The streets, the people. Just the, you know, just the fact of, it's just that the streets keep it coming. The passion for the music, the people. You know what I mean? I love doing this shit. And at the end of the day, I think I come from that cloth of music that's timeless music. And that's what keeps me still wanting to do it is because I endure it that much in my life. I feel good. And many collabs, some of my favorites, Scoot on the Barbie with Outkast and Apollo Kids with Ghostface Killer. What are some of the best collabs that you're proud of? Oh, I'm proud of everything that I've done. Proud of every moment of everything that I've done, you know what I mean? Especially the experience side of you know, like I said, just going through the game from being just a street street MC to being a big artist. So I would definitely say the passion is more keeping me grounded right now. Loving every minute of it. And on to RZA, what has he taught you as an artist? Oh, he taught me a lot. He taught me how to, you know, number one, believe in your dreams and basically 
you know, stay true to the hip hop, you know what I mean? And that's all I ever did was just follow his rules and orders on what we believed in. And, and you know, at one point, like I said, you know, Wu Chang was cats that had at one point some kind of low self-esteem, but it took brothers like Dirty and RZA and the Jizza to come and say, listen, we can do this. And, and we're here now, and I, and I appreciate them for that. And the three most important attributes within hip-hop, what would one need to be considered a ninja by Rayquan? I would definitely say your great character, your great character, the way you move, the way you, you know what I mean, balance things, and also the way how you speak and, you know, how you carry yourself. As long as you stay sharp, you a ninja, no doubt. And Shaolin vs. Wu-Tang, an incredible record with features from Nas, Black Thought, Rick Ross, and Lloyd Banks, with many Wu members, share about the project. They was all good friends of mine. I felt like they fitted in with, with, with what I was trying to do. And I knew that they really appreciated real hip-hop as well. And they knew that whatever I would come to the table with would be something that would drive motherfuckers crazy. So. That's all we did was we came together for the cause that to make more better hip hop, more great music. And the Wu Tang Rebirth tour in Europe, also featuring Boy Jones and Yellow Wolf. Share your favorite moments in Europe, and what would you like to say to your fans worldwide? Oh, I just want to say, you know, definitely we love y'all. You know, keep supporting the real hip hop. Go get my album in stores. It's a quality album. I'm always going to give you guys quality. Yo, we're going to do it again. You know what it is. Peace. And the biggest crowd you've ever rocked? The biggest crowd I ever rocked probably was a crowd that probably had like 60,000 people. Probably was in um, Switzerland or something. Pretty good crowd like that. And uh, the best hip-hop memory you've been part of or contributed to? I say the, the best, the, my best parts of hip-hop that I love is the fact of being accepted in it and growing up inside of it. What I contribute was something that I felt was a ritual that I got for being a good person that I am and, and believing in my dreams. And you got anything to say to Canada? Canada, I'm here for you. Ice H2O Canada coming soon. Get ready. You're going to see some things happening real quick out here. And also working with Global Syndicate. Let us know about that. They doing their thing. They, they doing their thing right now. You know, they in, they in basic training still. And uh, we wish them the best, too, because they got a lot of talent on that side, too. Shout out all my people's Global Syndicate. GS Group. For sure. And you got any shouts? Shout to the world. Shout to your moms, my moms. We love them. Peace. And shouts to Fortune Sound Club and the Wu-Tang Clan. And this is the Archivist, and you already know the name, y'all. The Archivist. This is hot.